What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today we're gonna to be talking about some of Sony's announcements from CES 2022, which includes some crazy technology in the drone industry and their ability to hold some of Sony's full-size cameras, as well as their second generation of electric car prototype, the Vision S2, which showcases a lot of Sony's experience in the imaging and the CMOS sensors, as well as entertainment and how that's been brought over to a full electric car experience, but also on the consumer fronts in products that we are very familiar with including the PlayStation and TVs. There are definitely like a lot of exciting announcements and unfortunately we weren't physically at CES this year, but it is definitely an event that I look forward to every single year. But this year at least, we've been able to keep up with it with videos like this and I'd like to give a huge thanks to Sony for sponsoring this video. So without further ado, here are some of the most exciting announcements from Sony CES 2022 showcase this year. So I think what I really noticed in my past few years of CES is that it has really become a showcase for transportation. Every major car manufacturer either shows a prototype or like a consumer model of a fully electric car of the future. But I think what is especially cool is a company like Sony, which has been in consumer tech, making their own model as well. And this year they showcased the Vision S02, which is the second generation of their prototype that we initially saw at CES in previous years. Although it might seem a little bit odd to some that Sony is testing an electric car, when you look at their portfolio of what they really specialize in, it almost does make total sense. Obviously, Sony has a ton of experience in imaging, content creation, sensor technology and algorithms, as well as augmented reality and even virtual reality through their experience in the gaming industry. And I think what Sony has really focused on is bridging all of their areas of expertise into a great electric car. And it really does show in some of the specific features in the Zero Two prototype. So essentially the prototype this year is an SUV model and SUVs have become extremely popular. Just take a look at some of the German brands out there who are traditionally known for like their sports cars. They will tell you that their crossover SUV is probably the best selling model at the moment because people like that hybrid utility of like a fast and sporty car, but also one that you can take your family in and also have a certain level of cargo as well. So I feel like with electric cars, the consumer models are definitely going to be focused on SUVs. So drones are always a huge trend at CES and it's really exciting to see how each brand utilizes their drone technology based on their existing experience to enhance the lives of consumers. But in Sony's case, the first thing that comes to mind in consumers is the multimedia and entertainment experience as well as their cameras, which are amongst the most popular on the market and Sony obviously has a very broad range of experience in that camera industry. Essentially, the Airpeak S1 is the world's smallest drone that is able to support the weight of Sony's mirrorless cameras because traditionally drones that are able to carry like full-size cameras have a few different major drawbacks. They're large, they're very loud, there's also like software parameters. They often do need a lot of specific training to use because they're very manual and essentially what Sony has done is taken that drone technology, made it work with full-size cameras but also include a lot of the smart features that would benefit users that are either amateur up to professional as well. And that includes utilizing Sony's very own sensors and algorithms that ensure the best stability and a gimbal-like experience from the drone which is the most important thing if you're going to be using your best camera on it as well. It does that by judging the environment, the location, and also the positioning. And on top of that, it's five stereo cameras and IR sensors are good for obstacle avoidance, which is always a good safeguard when you're gonna be flying a drone that is so large and expensive. So as someone who has worked on a lot of car videos recently and knows how hard it is to be able to track a car, strap someone onto the back of like a truck and try to follow and focus and all that kind of stuff, drones are definitely the way to go. And so I'm really interested to hopefully be able to try this out one day because it has the obstacle avoidance and also the seamless like gimbal experience, but gives you the ability to record using the camera that you would typically use for all of your other shots as well. I think what I've been seeing a lot of in the cinema world and what like Sony has done with the Airpeak S1 is it's focused on portability, but also applying some of the most useful consumer features onto a professional product to ensure that you can really just focus on creating and getting the angles that you would like. 
Unlike the production world of things though, Sony also talked a bit about virtual production and that is more so appealed to people who are in the industry and are even more advanced than content creators like myself who produce videos for the internet. But virtual production is essentially utilizing all of Sony's top tech in displays as well as cameras, which essentially like provides a new way of how mainstream production and cinematography can be done by not only pushing the boundaries of your backdrops, but also of course from a logistical standpoint can make a lot of sense as well. Sony essentially showcased their virtual screen tech, which utilizes their crystal LED display that has the best amount of contrast, the most accurate colors, to provide like a realistic background that can be used to film movies, for example, or even produce video games while looking like you're literally in the scene. Because of like the resolution, the fidelity and everything of it, paired with like the fidelity of the Sony Venice camera, which is their top end, it is able to work together to kind of change the way that movies are made in the future. Just from like some of the demonstrations they showcased with this crystal LED display and filmed on like a Sony Venice, it does provide a very compelling and realistic experience. Obviously, Sony in the PlayStation lineup has also been a huge talk over the past few years. And not only did Sony talk about like an Uncharted movie that's going to be coming out, but also PlayStation VR 2. If you guys remember a few years back, I actually did have a chance to try out the Sony VR technology, and it was a lot of fun. Some of the technical updates include the ability to support up to 4K 120, which is in line with the PlayStation 5 but it also gives you more dimensions of realism, including VR haptic feedback and also audio experiences, which is tech that Sony has emphasized a lot. And we actually did attend an event for their 360 reality audio a couple years ago. But we'll be interesting to see the lineup of games that continue to come out and especially with like the whole talk about like the metaverse and everything and how that utilizes the up-to-date VR technologies and also next generation consoles. Obviously VR technology from a hardware standpoint has made some huge steps and now it's just down to like the implementation of it and how seamless it is able to be in our everyday lives and I see that continuing to progress into the future. Talking about crazy though, another thing that Sony also talked about was something called the Star Sphere. And essentially what they kind of describe that as is that being able to see certain aspects of space from a real time view has kind of been reserved for astronauts out there. So they wanna to try to bring that to consumers. And what they've been working on and plan to launch in 2022 is a nano satellite. It features a 28 to 135 f4 lens that Sony has made that can be panned, tilted, zoomed, and also give you 360 degree rotation. And by using like the shooting simulator, you're able to set the angle of view and composition of your view of what you want to see from space. It allows consumers to either play like a simulated function or you can also go into like a live view, which allows you to control the camera live and take photos and screenshots for up to 10 minutes. All across the board, you see these impressive showcases of new display technologies that are going to be coming out in the current year and available to consumers, as well as what brands are working on in the future that may not be as accessible today, but years down the road is going to become the mainstream. And this year, Sony announced the A95K line of TVs, which is their QD OLED. That stands for quantum dot OLED technology, and it essentially merges the best of both worlds when it comes to quantum dot LED technologies, as well as OLED, which is organic light emitting diode technology of displays. So as you guys probably tell, I'm really excited about the TVs because just from having the A90J, which is the flagship from 2021, it was hands down the best TV that I have ever seen in person. And I'm just about to announce a huge series that has a huge focus on multimedia. And so I would love to have a chance to check that out. So just talking about like the whole future here with like electric cars, drones, TV technology, and how that is progressing, as well as like the star sphere, Sony essentially recapped their entire event by really focusing on the future of everything, which sums up what CES is all about. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think was the most exciting announcement at CES 2022 and what you think is a very big emphasis of technology in the future. And if you guys want to see any of these products featured on the channel when they do hit the market, make sure you let me know in the comment section below and drop a thumbs up on this video. 